Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today, what we're going to talk about is something called visual thinking. Uh, it's a great deal of our thinking really has to do with visual thinking. To preview events or plans before they occur. We do this in our day-to-day -day lives. Whenever we're planning even what clothes to wear, we visualize what we'd like to look like. And then we start pulling things out of our closet to match what we envision today we should look like. Most of us begin with that mental picture. Some artists plan their works mentally, seeing a completed piece before they ever apply anything onto a canvas or onto a piece of paper or tripping the shutter to take a picture, while others develop their work through the process of making it. In other words, I make a mark and then I look at it, I respond to it, and then I make another book. And that's just another process in terms of visual thinking. So let's hop on the bike today and just talk about and think about what visual thinking actually means. So what you'll have to think about when we're talking about visual thinking is our experiences influence both our inner visualization and our outer seeing. That is why I could ask 12 different people to paint a picture of the same thing and I would get 12 different paintings that look completely different. In other words, guys, if I were to ask a botanist or a farmer or a developer, meaning a construction developer or a painter or a photographer, to actually make a piece of the same landscape, it would all look different because they all approach the same subject from their own experiences, which leads them to focus and pay attention to different things within that same landscape. Visual thinking. We have a variety of responses to any given subject. For example, if you were to see a picture of a home, Intellectually, you would be able to interpret that it is an enclosed volume of various spaces. Emotionally, you may be able to transfer those spaces with personal associations from your own experience of what home means to you. For example, when I think of home, I think of the kitchen because my family, my dad, my mom, the entire family would revolve in the kitchen where conversations would take place, where I would watch them as they actually artfully create a meal while we talked about our day-to-day -day lives. Creative visual thinking is the combining of both the intellectual and the emotional. You combine both of those when you're thinking and seeing creatively. In other words, it's the literal and the metaphorical combining together. Let me give you a few definitions real quick. To be aware means to be conscious or to know something. To perceive is to become aware through the senses, particularly through sight or hearing. In other words, it's how do we make sense of the things we see? Well, we do through our experiences of similar things. For example, there are a billion different chairs. And if we were not able to see, be aware, and resolve that all those chairs, in essence, equal the same thing, which is a chair, we would be lost because we would be trying to resolve each chair as we encounter it as something new versus being able to go, okay, this flat thing with four legs on the bottom and a back uh, a backrest, they all equal, in essence, the same thing. Chair. To varying degrees, we are all guided and limited in the growth of our visual awareness by language. Remember, we talked about the imperfection of language when we are trying to discuss visual art. When we look at an object only in terms of a label or a stereotype, we miss the thing itself. We generalize, for example, the word tree to mean all trees, 
instead of looking at a very specific tree and the beauty that can be found in how one tree's branches are orchestrated versus another. We need that to process the information to overgeneralize, to go, okay, that's a forest of trees, but we tend to then overlook the beauty of each unique object. Same thing with chairs. Remember, each and every object has a uniqueness to it that we should become aware of. For example, this is a piece by Pablo Picasso. He called it a bull's head. And yeah, it does look like a bull's head. But how is this art? Because you know what it is? It's simply a bicycle seat attached to a set of handlebars. Now, why is it art? Because the artist was able to recognize that these forms of a bicycle seat and handlebars could be reconstituted into something else, right? It is seeing the everyday in a different way, in a new way. That's all artists are doing. They're showing you the world as, it, as we all recognize it to be, but just in a new, different way. This is simply an example that shows how the ordinary can gain significance when we see it in a new light. And we have to redirect that way of seeing because we have all been trained not to see in the way artists are seeing. And we have to become more conscious of our own sensory experiences. For example, this is Edward Weston's pepper. What is it? Well, yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like, a bell pepper. Ordinary things become extraordinary when seen without prejudgment. Is this photograph of a pepper wonderful to us because we like peppers? Not. It's because the artist was able to show us something very ordinary in a new way. When we look at this pepper, could this be a metaphor for an embrace or a closed fist? Weston wrote this in his journal, August 8th, 1930. I could wait no longer, my new peppers. So I put aside several projects that I had going on and spent the afternoon with seven new negatives. It is classic, completely satisfying, a pepper, but more than a pepper, abstract. It's abstract in that it's completely outside of the subject matter. This new pepper takes one beyond the world we know in the conscious mind, meaning he was seeing this pepper as meaning so many other things other than what we generally recognize it as, as a pepper. He took this thing and saw it as a metaphor for something else. Weston's Peppers combines an awareness, the consciousness of recognizing this is a pepper. The creativity, the form of the pepper resembling something else, and then communication. The pepper acts like a metaphor for the viewer. So Weston combined awareness with creativity, with communication to make this piece. That's what artists do. Now think about it. All this is found in a freaking pepper. Look around the world. Look at your own world and see what you will be able to see as ordinary anew. So this is what I want you to think about for this week. As you go through your day, see if you can see the familiar in a new way. See if you can make visual connections to objects in new ways. See if you can visually create metaphors out of the subjects of the ordinary. And drop me a note down in the comment section to let me know what it is that you have found within this past week. I think you will be amazed at what you will see when you combine your awareness with your creativity to create visual communication. Just use your eyes, friends, and you will see the beauty in the world that is all around you. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this week talking about visual thinking, and I hope you'll be able to apply this into your daily lives. Until next week, my friends, peace and love, and keep on keeping on.